Hello everybody, I am the Barango and welcome to another How To RA2 Robot Arena 2 tutorial video. Today we're going to be taking on Hammerbots, or Xbots, they're all the same. So here is Deadbeat, who is a very standard bot and has already lost both of his wheels because he is a terrible bot. And there he goes, shuffling over towards the wall. He is a Hammerbot and as you saw, he's not very good. And I was asked on how can you improve a Hammerbot design. Well. I forgot he could still move. The reason I showed you Deadbeat is because there is more than just how you build the hammer to make a good hammer bot, and that's what we're going to talk about today. There are the two different ways to improve your hammer bot. The actual hammer, and everything else around it. Okay, ignore the fact that this weapon motor is sticking halfway out of the chassis. I built it in Kimpoto Freedom for something we're going to do later, but just picture it in the actual uh, chassis here. Your very simple, very basic hammer bot form is what you see here. Just your start point and just your end point, and you've got the one motor in with an extender and with a head, the max head in this case. That's very basic and quite frankly not very good because if you've played the game enough you'll know in the heavyweight division there is uh, Bear, there is Raptor, there is Deadbeat, and there is Grog. I don't know if there's any more Hammerbots in the heavyweight division on the game and not really any of them are tough or menacing besides Raptor who's probably the toughest and even then he's not the best. Instead of building bots from scratch I'm going to show a bunch of examples of uh, the different techniques in action in builds. So let's start off with Kilohertz. This was built by Thread of Length. You saw this Kilohertz in BattleBots Reborn Cup Season 3 where it didn't perform the best let's be honest but it has the basic concept that you want from a good hammer bot. And that first technique, let me remove some of the BS here so you can actually see what's going on here. One way you can improve your Hammerbot designs is using Component Freedom to attach one burst motor to another. And what that does is if you have the start and end points of the burst motors at a good setting, they'll fire together and add a little bit more power and pace to how your weapon fires. So this is what Threat of Length has done. He's got a snapper two burst motor, the green and purple, down here with an angle connector on it and then a DDT burst motor attached to that. So that when it fires, I hit the wrong button, when it fires, pretty powerful, right? You'll notice as I fire this weapon that watch the angle connector, it kind of dips down awkwardly. Now this is something that when you're trying this technique with two motors attached to one another, it's very important to find a good balance with your start and end points for both of the motors. Because if you don't, if you're not careful to so see where the uh, weapon is here, it's a pretty smooth firing action. But if you're not careful, the weapon will go from here, it'll go maybe part way, and freeze just for a moment and lose all of its momentum before kind of just petering out in the rest of its motion. I don't know if I've got a bot that can, uh, I can show that. Another technique you can do is the counterweight. And the counterweight is also decently effective, um, just not in the build I'm going to show you. So, here is Frenzy. Very nicely built machine by me, totally. Um, what Frenzy has is just a single motor attached to the chassis, like normal. But as you can see, there is a sledgehammer sticking out of the other side. It's not too hard to set up a counterweight. Let me just clear some of his BS here. The way to do a counterweight properly is you have your weapon sticking out from the pivot point of your burst motor as such. I'll now use a red extender so that you can see a little bit better. You then attach through component freedom a red extender or any sort of extender really. I'm in the wrong version of the game. Alright, pardon that interruption everybody, I'm back now in my component freedom version. I didn't realize I did that. So, back to Frenzy, you have your weapon uh, and its extender, its long piece attached to the pivot point of your motor. And then to get the counterweight, take an extender and you attach it to the extender of your weapon. Now you'll see how the red extender I just attached is going through the burst motor. Thank you Component Freedom for that. And then you don't have to put on the sledgehammer, I don't know why I did specifically for Frenzy, but the ballast is probably your best option with its different uh, its different amounts of weight you can do, and its size. And as you can see, it gives a little bit of potency to that weapon, whereas it wasn't there. It's still not bad, but it can help the... Uh, it can help the hammer bot depending on what kind of hammer bot you have. Frenzy 
isn't really the most complicated build here, but for other bots, it could be very helpful. One other type of hammer or axe bot you can build is not even to use a burst motor. You could use an HPZ tech. It just requires a little more precision, control with your weapon, and you have to be a little bit careful when you're firing your weapon up and down because you could damage the head of your hammer. Here is Terahertz, as you've seen in Robot Wars Reborn Cup Season 1, built by Thread of Length as well, and he has used the technique of HPZ tech motor. You can see there's a bunch of extenders here too to act as a bit of a counterweight, and the way that works is... There you go. Turn him so you can see a little bit. As you can see, it fires pretty quickly, the weapon, but look at all of those damage numbers racking up very, very quickly. And that's why this uh, technique is also one that's a bit difficult. But if you're careful with it, if you're a very good driver, then you don't have to worry so much. If you're coming up to your opponent, you fire the hammer, oh, but I'm going to miss. Maybe you can pull it back just enough. I'm not that good, that's why I just missed there. However, it's not just the way you build your hammer that can make your hammer bot effective, it's what's around the hammer, it's the rest of the bot that is actually very crucial for a hammer bot. You ever realize though, hammer bots in real life just don't do very well when it, when it comes to winning titles. They're not usually there because the hammer can't cause as much damage as say a horizontal spinner. Look at, look at Beta versus Tombstone as one of the best examples. Beta is a very powerful hammer, if not the, big, the most powerful hammer in the sport, and he gave Tombstone a good dent, but it didn't slow Tombstone down at all. Tombstone was able to destroy Beta's weapon, and if the fight lasted a little longer, he probably would have gotten more damage. Speaking of Beta, let's look at Beta. Here is a fan-built uh, Beta. I don't remember who it's by. And what I want you to see is everything around this weapon motor. Here's a cleaned up version of that beta. I removed a lot of the BS and as you can see the two weapon motors are there. This burst motor doesn't do as much of the movement. Um, as you can see there's its start point, there's its finish, barely what 15 degrees. Whereas, whereas the other motor goes from where it is now to a pretty significant increase. Anyway, back to the uh, Beta in its full form. All of these extenders are there to not only shape Beta properly, to make him look like a better recreate, but they are protecting, to an extent, the very vital motors. That is one of the things I mean. Protect your motors, protect the front of your bot, like in this case with a ram plate, so that you can take more damage and have more time for your weapon to do what it's supposed to. Back to this little file half bot I started creating because I wanted to show a very basic hammer bot and how if the weapon's not good enough, how are you going to protect it? So let's quickly throw some stuff together. Obviously you want to protect your front chassis so that you have the time to do something. So throw on a quick ram play maybe, put some kind of wedge or spikes in the front. Anything to protect more of your surface area to give you more time. Want to protect that motor a little bit? Well, you put some spikes in the front of it, something like that. Because if then a weapon is going to come close, who are you fighting? A hammer, a vertical spinner, um, an overhead saw like saw blades. You got to have something there that's going to fend off your opponent from the vital. And then the other thing that you could do to protect your uh, hammer bot. You see that nice long red extender that is weak and exposed and has a lot of surface area. Protect it. Maybe by putting in some other extenders all around it. Or, if you want, take a spike strip maybe and put it along, that's the wrong category. Take a spike strip, put on an extender, and then just slap this on right here. So now, if anybody tries to attack the stem of your weapon, it's protected. These are little tiny details that might be good for helping your Hammerbot succeed. Another thing you could do if you want your weapon to be a little bit stronger, put on two heads. Here's two X heads on this creation, slightly uh, misaligned, slightly staggered a little bit. Increases the surface area so that maybe uh, you can hit opponents more easily. And there's if one breaks off, there's a second one there ready to keep attacking. With all of the hammer bots I've built myself and have played with that were builds of somebody else, what I have learned is that no matter how powerful you make your hammer bot, it's still going to take a long time to beat your opponent. And that's why you have to be prepared for the endurance battle. That's kind of the key, at least in my eyes, with a good hammer bot. That's pretty much all I've got for this video, but I wanted to show you uh, something else I attempted. Before I started this video, I put a little bit of time into trying out a couple other techniques that came to mind. 
with uh, with building hammer bots. So remember the two motor technique that you saw in kilohertz and in beta? Well, I tried a slightly different uh, version of that. Instead of having one motor, maybe an extender or something, and then another motor to fire together, what I tried to do is one motor, an extender, and then the other motor over top. So that maybe the pivot point being in the same spot would help a little bit. So this is my attempt at that. As you can see, um, the motors, there's two DDT burst motors within each other. This little extender here, this 20 centimeter, centimeter extender, is what's connecting the two. And then onto the second motor, I put the actual hammer. And I had a hard time trying to figure out how to do my, uh, my points here. My start motion, my range of motion, start range of motion, end. If you will. I also put a little spike on because this thing was firing so quickly and it was, as you can see it's bouncing without me doing anything that it was causing damage to the hammer so I was trying to figure that out but the other problem I had with this bot not only was it not very effective at times Let's see if I can get it to happen hold on it's not happening there it is couldn't figure out why that was being a thing but it was so I just kind of gave up on this experiment and thought, you know what, maybe it's something that somebody else can toy with that idea and it'll get figured out eventually. Look at that. There it is. Okay. Saw how, did you see how the weapon fired about 80% of the way and then hesitated and then just kind of limped down, right? That's what I meant with lining up your start and end points for both of your motors and when, that's when I mentioned it with kilohertz towards the start of this video where it'll, okay, no, didn't do it again. Um, if, if there's that little hesitation, the hammer's gonna lose all of its impetus and you're not gonna have any good shots whatsoever. So now that I got that shown, I can end this video and feel pretty confident about it. I hope that some of these building techniques are useful to you guys um, and hopefully the ones I toyed with before recording are something that, maybe there is something there and it just takes somebody that puts more time into it more than I did to get it right. Thank you guys for watching this tutorial episode for Robot Arena 2. Plenty more to come in this series and plenty that we've already done. Maybe I will link the playlist in the description if I remember to. We'll see. Thank you for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed and comment any other suggestions you have for the series and I'll see you next time. And then collect 25 energy crystals. Oh boy, what a mission. Hello everybody and welcome to LEGO Rock Raiders. I think this is the 12th episode. So this sounds like it's going to be a little bit difficult. We are going to be faced with monsters. This is the weirdest fucking thing. Oh my god.